you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Um, guys, I just want to say thank you. This is the last in the series today. Uh, the pastor will be back. I know you guys are ready for him to come back. You're excited. Well, man, I'm tired of listening to James speak up there and, and everything like that. So, But I appreciate the opportunity because it gets me back into the Word. It gets me back into the Word deep, and that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing. It allows me a chance to uh, learn as well. Every time you're in the Word, you can learn something. You just got to open up your heart and your mind to do so and study a little bit more and study a little bit more, go deeper and deeper. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10 through 18, we've been talking about the armor of God. But today, we're going to see that the victory is ours, that the victory is ours. See, I believe what God does in the past, present, also tells us what he's going to do in the future. He is consistent. He is constant. He's going to move to victory that's going to be his because it's going to be for his glory. His glory. So we're going to be in Isaiah today. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 through 14. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 through 14. We um, see different parts of these victories, of these battles, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. So I'm picking out one out of the Old Testament today just to show you that he's there and the battle is going to be won. The battle is going to be won. And the war is already won. So if you go to Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 through 14, go ahead and stand up. Stand up. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from the farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will op- uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all who are incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing, and they shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. Fear not, you worm Jacob. You men of Israel, I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Lord, just thank you for your words. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak through this message today. And Lord, let us learn one more thing about you and apply it to our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Today we come to conclude this sermon series, Uh, We're at War, It's Not a Time for Rest. Uh, To prepare for battle, we learned that we have to um, take up all the armor. We had to take the weapon and know how to use that weapon and how to use it. But victory is ours. Victory is ours. In Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked his disciples, what is the world saying about him? What is the world saying about him? And then he turns to Peter and says, what do you say about me? And Peter said that he was the Christ, the Messiah, and the Son of the living God. But Jesus says to him in verse 18, and this is important to me and Holly because we got to see this firsthand. And that is over at Caesarea Philippi, there's this huge cliff, just solid rock, huge cliff. And in the bottom of that cliff was was a mouth, a big old opening, a cave, in which water used to flow through. Water would flow out of that cave. And that's where the pagans, if you will, set up a temple to Zeus. They had an altar to, to Pan. They did all their ceremonies there. And that's where they would sacrifice the babies. They would throw them into that cave And if the baby reappeared, that meant that their God, little G, 
did not accept their offering, and it was going to be a bad harvest or bad whatever. But if, it, if the baby went on down, then it, he accepted that offering. I know it's terrible, it's a terrible thing, but, but that's what's going on. So what they called that place was the gates or the path to Hades, the path to hell. So that's the backdrop for Jesus when he's explaining these to his disciples. He has that behind him at Caesarea Philippi, and he says this, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, a gate is something that you don't attack with. The gate is something that is to defend. It's something in the front of the city, in front of the opening, to keep them from being attacked. It is a defense. You see here, Jesus is going to make a difference right now in his life, going to the cross, that the devil is already in the defensive mode. He's already there. He's already there. The gate is a defensive mode. Satan is in a defensive mode. It is Satan who's on the defensive. Jesus also tells us here that we, can, that we are on the attack and the victory or the spiritual battle is ours. As scripture passages today, God speaks to his people of Israel through the prophet Isaiah. He promised them three things, three things he promises. And the truth of this passage are the same truths that we can believe also today. First of all, he has the promise of his presence, that he's there with you. So in, in uh, verse 10, it says, um, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. He tells you two different things not to do. Do not fear. Do not fear. In fact, fear not or do not fear is written in the Bible 365 times. Now, just to let you know a little bit about me, and my calling, that's what brought me to finally surrender myself to the Lord to ministry. It was that, because I kept telling God, I am fearful, I am afraid, I, 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 I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. And he said, you can, fear not. And then the pastor of that camp came out there, I swear, I don't know any of these people, and the first words out of his mouth was, do not fear. The Lord says 365 thing, times in the Bible. And that was the time that the people said, that's when I actually started to say, God, okay, send me. Amen. And you know, the sad part about all that, or really not sad, sad part for me because I didn't realize it sooner. You know, when I went and told everybody that, hey, I think God's calling me to surrender to the Lord to, in ministry, and everybody around me was saying, well, dang it, it's about time. It's about time. So, so <laughs> anyway, enough about me and all that stuff, but, but it, it does mean something very special to me because at the point I stopped fearing and started following the Lord and believe him was the point that he can actually start using me. Amen. He can start using me, and he can use you too. He may not call you into a ministry or minister or anything like that, but he can still use you, and he will use you. You have to surrender to him, and you have to fear not. But he also says, do not be dismayed. He says, do not be dismayed. In the NASB, it says, do not anxiously look about you. And that's what it is. We're going to gaze around. We're going to dart around. We're going to be worrying about that. We're going to be looking at this. We're going to be doing things like that. And we're going to be totally distracted, totally distracted. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. It doesn't say he will come be with us. It says he is with us. He is with us. We must always remember, especially the times when we tend to be afraid, that God is always with us. At the time we are anxious, the things going on, he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. We see that both in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5, 6 in the New Testament. And we also see that in Deuteronomy chapter 31. 6 through 8 in the Old Testament. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear, for the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never forget you or forsake you. He then reminds them they do not need to fear because the one thing that is always there 
for I am your God. In fact, he says, I am your God, actually points back to when? To back when Moses says, who do I say send me? He says, I am. Tell him, I am sends you. I am with you. I am your God, is what God told Moses. I am has sent me, has sent you, has sent me. I am is a name that shows that he is eternal. He is all-powerful. He's an all-knowing God. No one is able to defeat him. No one is ever stronger than him. When we allow him to help us, no one can defeat us in battle. He is all-knowing. He always knows the right things to do. He always wins every battle, and he has the perfect strategies to do so. That way, he brings himself the glory, nothing that we do except for following what he says to do. You have to rely on him, not yourself. Rely on him. Not only is he going to give you his presence, he's going, he has a promise of protection. Verse 11 through 12 says, Behold, all those who are, are angered at you will be shamed and dishonored. Those who contend with you will be as nothing and will perish. You will seek those who quarrel with you, but will not find them. Those who are at war with you will be as nothing non-existent. God says he will protect his people. He says those who are angry will be put to shame. Those who contend with him will be disappeared. They won't be there anymore. Those who want to go to war with us will be as nothing. Does it say we will never fight a battle? No, it doesn't say that, does it? There are going to be battles in our lives. There's going to be times in our life we're going to be under attack especially when we're talking on spiritual attack, spiritual attacks as we go through these spiritual battles. That is, we're going to have to put on the armor of God to, to hold, to stand firm. We have to put on the entire armor of God. That's why Paul is telling us about this, because there are going to be battles. We're going to be standing face to face with evil and things going on in our lives. We have to stand firm. Now, he's telling us that... Um, he will protect us that no matter what happens, we will win because he absolutely has that taken care of. You just have to have faith in that. Not only is he promising to be there, his presence, not only is he promising protection, he promises us provision. He promises us provision. In verse 10 and also in verse 13 and 14, it says this, Fear not, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my, your right, my righteous right hand. I will uphold you. And in verses 13 and 14 of Isaiah 41, it says, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. Hold your right hand. You will see the power. You will see the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witness in both Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and even to the remote parts of the earth. That's in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. God promises you that if you allow him to be, fill you with the Holy Spirit, that he will be with you all the time. But he also promises you in these verses, I will help you. If you imagine it, I'm going to hold your hand. I, the, the only thing I can think of, just because this is current in my life, is, you know, Shane and Virginia have a little one. Their name's, her name is Julia. And Julia was learning to walk. And what we would do would we would hold her hands so she can walk along. Now, you don't need to hold her hands anymore. She's running all over the place right now, okay? <laughs> she, she loves being out there in the country now and doing that. But that's what the picture is right here, that he's holding us because he's carrying us along because we're too weak. You know, the passage here said worm. Worm Jacob. Man, that is weird. Why does it say worm? The worm Jacob, it means weak, small, um, something that doesn't exist in any strength whatsoever. That's what it means by worm. And it goes all the way through the passage of Isaiah, even to the end, the promise at the end, talking about the worm. It says this worm will never leave, and that's Israel. That's the promise he gives you. So he's saying, you are weak. I am your strength. Let me pick you up and carry you. I am your strength. I will provide for you. I will hold your hand. I'll walk with you, holding your hand. 
We are not able to fight and win the battles on our own, but with God by our side holding us up like a parent does a child, we will also be able to win the battles. We will also be able to win the battles, the battles that God won on our behalf. He allows us to share in that victory that, of his. With God as our aid and helping in our battles, we can now see that we must take the battle to the enemy. We must not sit back and wait for the enemy to attack us. That's why I was saying, you know, this is a time for battle, a time of war, not a time for us to rest. It's not a time for us to go home and not worry about it. It's not a time for us to get distracted with everything in the world. It's not a time for us to run away scared either. It's a time for us to be ready, standing firm in his word, ready to stand for the church, stand for what we believe, stand so that God will fight the battle and the war will be won. And that war, I know, is won by his son, Jesus. Amen. By his son, Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Sorry, guys. I am saved by the Lord Jesus. And, and it is emotional. It always has been. What then shall we share? Okay, sorry. Romans 8, chapter, 30, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then shall we, shall we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who is indeed interceding for us, who shall separate us from Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are like regarded as sheep being led to slaughter. That's from Isaiah, by the way. No one of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will able, be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the question I need to ask you today is, are you separated from the Lord today? Is there still a huge canyon between you and God? Have you finished that spiritual battle in your heart because you're separated from God? Have you done that? As our musicians come up to play, I have an invitation for you. If you haven't done that already, you can do that today. You can take care of that today. If the spiritual battle is not being fought in your life, or the spiritual battle is in your life is because you're separated from God, which that's the ultimate spiritual battle, is your separation from God. Then we can take care of that today. All you have to do is trust Christ as your Savior and Lord. Believe that he went to the cross for you. He died on that cross for you. He was buried, and he rose again on the third day. If you trust him as your Savior, because he's already your Lord, whether you choose to follow him or not. But if you trust him as your Savior today, you can be saved too. And that spiritual battle is now a war that's already won in your life. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. And Lord, I give these sins over to you because you went to the cross for me and I turn from those sins now and today I trust you as my Savior and Lord from here and now on Lord thank you for your salvation thank you being my Lord and Lord thank you for all that you give us whether we see it or not for it's in Jesus name I pray Amen. Now, if this is the first time you did this prayer, this is going to be a short invitation because we're going to move on into the Lord's Supper. I'm going to be right up here. I'm going to turn off the microphone. We can talk. But if you made a decision today, 
we want to know about it. We want to celebrate with you. If you have another decision to make, I'll sit here and I'll pray with you as well. Whatever decision that is. If you're online, which hopefully it came back on, it may not have, we don't know. 806-329-3030. Just text that number. When I get done here, I'll come text with you and talk to you. But if you had a decision that you made, come talk to me about it. The invitation is open to you.